Welcome everyone. In this video, I would like to chat about this definite integral. And we are expressing this definite integral as the limit of this Riemann sum. So this expression right here, this is what we call the Riemann sum. So it is named after that uh, great mathematician Riemann. Now, what we're doing in reality is that we're summing up infinite number of tall rectangles underneath a curve. So suppose you have, um, so let's consider a function like this. Let's call this f of x. And we're looking at from a to b. So let's say this is a and this is b. So what this integral represents is the area underneath this curve. So everything that's covered from a to b under the curve above the x-axis is what this definite integral is. But what you're really doing is you're constructing tiny tall, very skinny rectangles. So tiny, tiny rectangles, their heights are right here. So very tiny rectangles, sorry for my drawing. Uh, and you're creating infinite number of them up to the last point. So all these tall rectangles, when you sum them up, you get this definite integral, which represents the area underneath this curve. So another way I can uh, explain this idea to you is by drawing another piece. So for instance, if you're looking at another picture, let's say this is the function f of x. So if I wanna represent this area right here, let's call it, I don't know, <laughs> c to d. And I wanna represent this as a definite integral. So it covers all of this area. This is our function f of x. So this can be represented as the integral from c to d, so you're starting at c, ending at d, of this function f of x dx. So that's the area underneath this curve bounded by x equals c to d. And what you're really doing is summing up infinite number of skinny rectangles underneath this curve from c to d. Now let's go ahead and illustrate this idea with more um, appropriate examples. So let's consider the following. Uh, example. Let's say we want to find the area of this uh, region right here. Say from, um, uh, let's go from negative 4 to 0 of this function 16 minus x squared dx. Now we're not going to draw rectangles because I uh, worked those questions out in another video, I'll put the link in the description box below so you can check it out. But here we're gonna use the ideal rectangle um, area to find the actual area without estimating the area. So if you draw this geometric shape, you will see that it looks something like this. So, um, well, we're looking at negative four to zero. So this is negative four, this is zero. So we're looking wherever that region is. Now, if you don't know how to find the region, you can sketch it. So let y be equal, or f of x, doesn't really matter. Let's choose y to be the function, square root of 16 minus x squared. So I can square both sides, y squared is equal to 16 minus x squared. And this is, uh, it looks like a circle, but add x squared to both sides, you get x squared plus y squared is equal to 16 or four squared. Now that's a circle of radius four, so you know you're looking at a circle of radius four. So from the center, you're moving four units to the left. So that's this circle. This is also four. And then of course we have the circle continuing entirely. But the reason I'm drawing this as a dotted line because we're not looking at any of that. We're only looking at from negative four to zero. So we're only looking at this portion right here. So we wanna know what is this area? So that's the area we're focusing on. Now, how do we find that area? Well, since this is a geometric shape, we know how to find its area by simply um, using the formula of area of a circle. So this is equal to area of a circle. Now, this isn't the entire circle. This is only one fourth of a circle. So it's not even half of a circle, <laughs> one fourth. So this is the um, entire circle. So it's one fourth times the area of a circle, which is pi r squared. Now we know what the radius is, is, radius is four. So this is simply one fourth times pi times four square, which is simply four pi. So that's the area of only this portion of the circle. I hope this is making sense. 
Now, another way to do it would be to find the antiderivative of this function and then plug in the upper limit and the lower limit. Now, if you haven't learned how to do antiderivative, you might want to do it this way for now. Later on, you can do antiderivatives and save time. And I'm going to show you that with the next example, since it's much easier to integrate. So let's go ahead and take a look at another example. So say we want to find the area of this integral. Uh, let's do 1 half to 3 halves of the function negative 2x plus 4. Now this is more simpler uh, function to look at and simpler bound. Um, the previous one was a little bit more complicated if you were to use the antiderivative, at least for now. So uh, let's go ahead and sketch. So I know this is my function y, let's call it y. So let y be equal to the function 2x plus 4, or you can call it f of x. So when I plug in a half, so when x equals a half, y value is negative 2 times a half plus 4, which is negative 1 plus 4, that's 3. And then when x equals the upper bound, 3 half, your y value is negative 2 times 3 half plus 4, which is negative 3 plus 4, that is 1. So these are the points. So when x equals half, y is 3. Let's draw it. So here is the drawing. So when x equals 1 half, let's suppose this is 1 half, y is 3 right here. So let's suppose this is 3. So right up here. And then when x equals 3 half, y is 1. So 3 half is right here. And x is 1. Let's call this 1. So we're looking at the region bounded by this curve. So from here to here. So I'm going to draw a straight line because it's a line in mx plus b form. The slope is negative. And you're looking at the area of this region. So all of this. That's what we're looking for, the area. Now, this is going to be a very interesting problem because the area is going to be composed of two different geometric shapes. So if you draw a line right at one, you have two different shapes. You have a triangle, and on the bottom you have a um, rectangle. Now this might be a square. <laughs> uh, my drawing doesn't seem to be one. So this is going to be the area of the triangle plus the area of the rectangle. So I'm just going to spell it out that way. So this is the area of the rectangle. Well, so what's the area of a triangle? Well, it's one half base times height, and the area of a rectangle is length times width. So let's focus on the triangle first. So focusing on the triangle, I'm looking for how much is this area right here. So we need the base. So base is this distance right here. So that's this distance right here, which is 3 half minus 1 half. That's 2 over 2, that's 1. So we can say that the base is 1 and the height, so that's this distance right here. So from 3 minus 1, that gives you 2. So the height is 2. Plus, now let's focus on the rectangle. So the rectangle is right here. So the color is not so visible. So if you find the measurement, it actually happens to be a squared. So this is a squared, a square. So the length, well, that's um, the base of that triangle. So that happens to be one. And the height is this distance right here, which happens to be one. So that's why it's a squared. So we know this is one plus one, which is two. So that's the area of this entire region right here, which is a composed of a triangle and a rectangle. Now let's see if we can do it by using antiderivative. So let me show you that. So for antiderivative, we're going to use the power rule to integrate this function right here. And then we'll plug in the upper limit and the lower limit as the fundamental theorem of calculus. So if I integrate negative 2x, so that's negative 2x squared over 2, plus when you integrate 4, you get 4x. And you're evaluating this from 1 half to 3 half. Now simplify before you plug in the upper limit and the lower limit. 
So negative two over two, that's just negative x squared plus four x, and we're plugging in one half and three half. So first you plug in the upper limit into all of these x's right here, and then minus the lower limit. So that's the fundamental theorem of calculus. So we plug in three halves, so that's negative three half squared plus four times three half, and then minus the lower limit. So now we take this number and we plug in every x we have in the function. So that's gonna give us uh, negative one half squared. So this is one half squared plus four times one half. And then we just simplify this. So this is evaluated at the, um, so this is at x equals three half, just a side note. And this is evaluated at x equals one half, and then we subtract them. That's the fundamental theorem of calculus. So when I do three half squared, I get negative nine fourth, and then four times three half, that will be six, and then minus, so one half squared, that's one fourth, and then plus four times a half, that's two. Then distribute the negative out carefully. So here you get negative nine fourth plus six minus one fourth uh, minus two. So negative, um, okay, I forgot the negative sign, I'm sorry. This should be a positive one fourth. Carefully distributing it out. And then this is equal to what? So negative nine fourth plus one fourth, that's negative eight fourth, which is negative two. And then six minus two, that's positive four. And that is equal to two. And that's exactly what we got geometrically when we found the area right here by using the geometric shapes, triangle and the square. All right, so this is it. I hope this makes sense. See you next time.